I'm standing out in front of this house in uh, Lilydale. You might be wondering, why am I standing outside this house in Lilydale? Well, this house is the home of Swamp Fox Productions. Now, most theatre groups, they get to rehearse uh, in the theatre they use. Some use uh, the shed, as we've found out. But Swamp Fox, which was established by John and Loretta Bishop, uh, use their house because they're just a duo. They're not a full uh, theatre, they're just the two of them. So to save costs and to keep things simple, they use their house. And tonight we've come to see them. They're going to do the first reading of their next production, which is Motortown. So how about we go inside and have a look? You sleep with a frown on your face. Anybody ever tell you that? No. Well, it's true. I went in to check on you, you were frowning. What have you been doing since half five? Cleaning the flat. Yeah, good idea. Can I get you some breakfast? Oh, that'd be lovely, Lee, thank you. I've got some Cocoa Pops. Do you like some Cocoa Pops or would you prefer sugar pops? Uh, cocoa Pops is fine. And a cup of tea? Lovely. Milk and two sugars and the tea bag in first before the hot water. Well, that's right. Do you like some toast as well? I would, please. I've got butter, butter margarine, marmite. Jam, marmalade, peanut butter, nut, honey, Nutella and lemon curd. Butter would be nice. And a little bit of marmalade, please. Right, coming right up. I'm here with John Bishop, co-founder of Swamp Fox Productions and director of Motortown. John, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Tim. Now, my first question is, what made you and your wife, Loretta, decide to form Swamp Fox Productions? Is, is there not enough uh, community theatres around the town? Never enough community yeah. theatres around the town. Uh, there's a particular reason why we formed Swamp Fox. Uh, after some 30-plus years of directing, uh, I was wanting to move on to more challenging theatre, confrontational theatre, edgy theatre, mm -hmm. compelling theatre, but of course we know that amateur theatre is dollar driven. Yeah. So in the main, most shows that I, I was putting forward were being rejected. No. Not because of their quality, but simply because uh, their core audience wouldn't sit still for it. No. And uh, so my good wife Loretta one day said to me when I was getting very frustrated at being rejected with a particular play, she said, John, why don't you just start up your own company and do it yourself? Good idea. That was seven years ago, Tim. Right. And we're, I think Motor Ten is our seventh production. Oh, that was my next question. What, how many have you done? So you've done seven. What are some of the others? We only do one a year. We started with Below. Uh, which was uh, about two English half-brothers that come out to Western Australia to work in the mines. It was about domestic violence, affairs. It was a fairly gritty scene. Uh, uh, overall, a little bit of nudity and uh, some, uh, certainly some strong language, and, uh, and that was the one that got us underway. Right. So as you say, Swamp Fox is trying to do uh, more edgy, is that the right term? More Without edgy, different productions. So mm -hmm. if we go on to talk about Motor Town, I, um, I'm not sure if a lot of the viewers would know what Motor Town's about. It's, it's a bit stronger. It's not your English farce of closing doors or uh, who done it or anything like that? None of the above, Tim, no. <laughs> no, it's about uh, Danny, who's a returned uh, squaddy soldier who's been fighting in the Afghanistan war. And uh, I, I think that Danny had his problems before he went overseas and did his tour of duty, but certainly when he came back, uh, he was uh, very bitter and very twisted. He's a chronic liar. Um, he's an appalling uh, piece of work. Right. Strong language in this one? Very strong language, oh, yes. Violence, coarse language. Um, right. Now, I, I did look it up and I noticed it was written and first performed in 2006. So correct. obviously very new, I'll call it new. Yeah, yes. Does that hinder people coming to see it because they may not know it? or? It doesn't have that history of others? Uh, well, look, I don't believe so, because I think that the kind of uh, theatre that we're trying to develop, uh, we're really going after a different demographic. Sure. We're trying to encourage younger people because uh, uh, we believe that uh, the core audience at the moment are a lot older, mm. and uh, they have their requirement, be it Neil Simon, be it Alan Aikborn, be it David Williamson. Uh, so we're, we're certainly making those folk welcome, but really what we're after is the younger, the next generation, because we would hate to think that we're actually riding a dinosaur here. Yes, I can understand. We want community theatre to be alive and well and prosper. I can understand. And so I want to present stuff that represents the world that I live in, yep. albeit a flawed world, but, uh, and I believe that a lot of the audience that we're developing um, are looking for that kind of theatre. We had over 80% seat occupancy for our last show. Excellent. Mm -hmm. It's only a 60 seat theatre we work out of, mm -hmm. but that's a, a damn good result. It sure is. Mm -hmm. Now, casting such a, a strong play, 
What were you looking for in the auditionees? Well, I didn't have any audition Good. Theories. You called up all the old gang, did you? Well, I, I do. I tend to, having been around for so long, there aren't too many people out there that I don't know um, exactly who's out there. And, uh, and I... Uh, tend to have created a family whereby uh, I work with people and if they produce the goods and they're of a talent, uh, then I'll tend to keep using them because I'm only doing the one show a year, mm. so you can't have exposure problems. <laughs> so, oh no, there he is Not again. <laughs> so, like, for instance, Ron uh, Koffler, this is his fourth production with me. With Tom Fox? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Keith Hutton, how many have you done with Keith? Keith only did the original show with me and he's back for his second show, which I'm delighted about. Good. Yeah, He's so Keith's up for his second stint. Oh. So tonight you're doing the uh, first read-through. We're going to uh, film some of that. So We are. We're missing two characters, but uh, I think you'll get a, a fair amount of the flavour of what it's about. Oh. And, uh, and uh, I hope you enjoy. We will. We'll let you get on to it. John, thank you for your time. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Danny, look, I'm glad you're back. I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you didn't get your head blown off. I, I hope you're going to be OK. Yeah, I am. But I don't owe you anything. And if I ask you to leave me alone through your brother or through a letter or through a text message or a note by our teacher, then I expect you to leave me alone. I am going to be more than all right. I'm going to be great. Because if you don't... Yeah, what? I'll call the cops. I'll go to court. I'll get an order out on you. No danger. You what? I mean it, Danny. Where are you staying? Where am I staying? You heard me. Where are you staying, Danny? What do you want to know that for? You staying with your mum and dad? No, I'm not. I'm staying at Lee's. What do you want to know that for? So I can tell the cops if you ever contact me again. No, you're lying. Try me. You must be philosophically interested in us asking about the meaning of wood or the meaning of grass. There is no meaning. Life is, as science has proven in the last two years, a generic system, an arrangement of molecular structure. There is no solidity, only a perception of solidity. There is no substance, only a perception of substance. There is no space, only a perception of space. This is a freeing thing in many ways, Danny. It means I can be anywhere at any time. I can do anything. I just need to really try. This is Jade. Say hello, Jade. Hello. Hello. How's Tom doing? He's all right, I think. Good man. Good man. Um, you want, I've got cocoa pops. Would you want some cocoa pops or would you like some sugar puffs? No, cocoa pops is fine. And a cup of tea. What? Lovely. With milk, two sugars in a tea bag in first before your order. Yeah, that's right. And would you like some toast as well? well that would be lovely, Lee. Thank you very much. I've got butter, margarine, marmite, jam, marmalade, peanut butter, honey, Nutella and lemon curd. Oh, butter would be nice. Oh, and a little bit of marmalade, please. Right. Coming right up. I'm glad you're back and I'm glad to say. And I'm glad that you didn't get your head blown off. And I hope that you're going to be okay. Yeah, why? Well, I am. But I don't owe you anything. And if I ask you to leave me alone, through your brother, or through a letter, or through a text message, or a note via our teacher, then I expect you to leave me alone. I'm going to be more than all right. Oh, I am going to be great. Because if you don't, Danny, what? I'm going to go to the cops, I'll go to court, and I'll get an order out on you. No danger. You what? I mean it, Danny. Where are you staying? Where am I staying? You heard me. Where are you staying, then? What do you want to know that for? Are you staying with your mum and dad? No, I'm staying with Lee, but what do you want to know that for? So I can call the cops if you ever contact me again. Yeah, you're lying. You try me, Danny. You must be. I'm here with uh, Ron Coppler, who's playing the role of Danny in Motortown. Ron, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Can you start off by telling us a bit about the character of Danny? Uh, Danny. 
Oh, I think I'd like to say he's a really complex character, um, but he's probably, I guess, not as complex as you'd probably think. I think there's uh, elements of, uh, I guess, uh, simplicity about him. Mm. Um, he's a constant liar. Um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the in the uh, the play, a lot of dialogue that uh, you know he's always picking up on, and uh, then changing it around yeah. as he goes through the play, and uh, you hear things being said again in in, a, in his voice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, look, I, I think he's uh, yeah not a not a nice person. I don't think I'd want to uh, be living next door to somebody no, well, like that. I've been watching the rehearsals. It's particularly unpleasant, I think, is a good uh, <laughs> might be a <laughs> well, was there, was there anything that um, drew you to the character or were you just offered the role? Or, or did uh, look, you... I was offered the role um, and look, you know, every time John Bishop sort of says, hey, I've got a role, do you want to do it? I sort of say yes because, you know, John with Loretta, you know, in Swamp Fox, they have that uh, motto, you know, uh, theatre without boundaries. Yep. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, you get an opportunity to play very horrible people. But uh, the thing is, it's important, I think, sometimes to tell those sorts of stories. Uh, you know, I was saying the other day about the, the three young ladies that were trapped in the house in um, America. Yep. Um, and as horrible as their whole story is, I think they get a lot of strength out of the story of the man being told. Yep. Um, so, you know, we can't sort of sit back and just say, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to go to a comedy all the time because that's the only life that I want to have around me that exists. Yep. Um, you know, there's horrible people in the world. And, there is. You know. Now, as we said before, this is a, an intense play. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a, uh, some scenes with uh, young Danielle mm -hmm. with, that are rather unpleasant. How do you go through those in rehearsal with Danielle? Is it, does it, is it drawing on you? Is it, is it, is it, is it, uh, how do you go with Danielle with it? Is it... Uh, look, it's really, really hard. Uh, um, you know, to, say that, to say that it was easy would be lying mm -hmm. because you know, when you know what is happening, you know what's going to be happening. Um, to see, you know, Danielle, who's a fantastic little actress, you know, you know just bawling her eyes out, mm. um, having to be totally calm, totally in control, um, yeah, it's really hard. You know, some, you know, in the early days, I was you know, sweating from, you know, having to sit there and try and, you know, understand that we're just acting. Yeah. Because, you know, it was hard work, a lot of hard work. But, yeah, you sort of, you know, eventually you sort of just get more into it, um, you forget about the fact that you know you've got lines, and you try and you know be the be the character. Yep. Um, now, Danny's meant to be twenty something, correct? Uh, no, no. How old is no, Danny? Younger. A oh, younger. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the okay. thing is, is that you know. How I'm old guessing she you're is? thirty. No, no. no I'm okay, not. sorry. I wish I was. <laughs> so how do you get around that? You're playing a character that's twenty, and you're a little bit older than twenty. Yeah. Well, she's actually playing somebody who's. Um, no, you. Your character, Danny. Well, the thing is, it's scripted for, I think, was it originally scripted for somebody in their uh, mid to late 20s? Right. But the thing is, you know, who says that it has to be that way? Right. And I think the direct, uh, well, sorry, I should say the writer actually wrote in certain ages, but who's to say that's right, wrong or indifferent? Good. No, um, you know, there's a lot of things, I think, within the script that you have to make up your own mind as to, you know, does it go this way, does it go that way? And it can be the age thing as well. So. Now, what I like about this theatre is it's very intimate. Mm. Now, you'll be doing a scene here with Rowan. Audience is there, what, a metre, metre and a half mm. behind us. Does that do anything for you? Does that bring intensity up? Or uh, I think it'd be very daunting for those people sitting there. Well, it gets look, a bit tough. if there's actually somebody sitting there, it's <laughs> much better than if there's nobody sitting there. True. Because, you know, then it's just a rehearsal. But it's never... I've worked in here a few times and... Uh, it, personally doesn't phase me. Mm. Um, you know, if I'm told to, you know, direct things at the audience, I'll direct it at the audience and uh, to a certain degree have a bit of a smile on my face when you're saying something that you know they're uncomfortable <laughs> with and you can see them wanting to move out of your line of sight because they think you can actually see their eyes <laughs> and you can't, you know, you know even, even that close, you know, when you're, you're under light and uh, they're in the dark. But it, it is funny watching them sort of squirm and thinking, why is he looking at me? Yeah. And you do a, a very good English accent. Is, is it, you're not English? No. no. Have you worked on it just for this play or have you done the English accent uh, before? I did a similar accent for Shadow Boxing, which I did with John as well, which is a one-man show. Um, I 
no, no, just, comes just naturally. when they say do an English accent, it's the that's one the I throw struggle. out because, it, you know, a lot of times, you know, the characters that I'm playing that I'm going to be using that accent for, mm. um, they're sort of working class. Um, so it just sort of comes out easy that it's that Essex sort of, you know, Cockney type, yep, yep. you know, accent. So, but no, just do it and then just sit there listening to Keith, who's actually from England, yes, yes. and think, oh, God, he's looking at me. Hey, I've done that wrong, haven't I? <laughs> All right, Ron, we've taken up enough of your time, so we'll let you go have a cup of tea. Excellent. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank yes. you. Thanks, Ron. So, um, have you seen Mike? My... Oh, I haven't, so I'm not. Oh, you're best off out of that one, I reckon. Yeah, I think you're right. I think she's completely insane. Yeah. You're right there, Tom. You are right there. Hey, I saw you on the telly. We packed her. Well, you looked alright. You came up fairly well, if you go. Great job. Thanks, Tom. Do exactly what you're doing at stage all that time until you get some Marty. And then you can go back to the ship station. Come on. Get back to the Just leave them right there. Alright. It's all Marty. You come back to that. So, Marty, what, come out again? Yeah, yeah. Alright. Yeah, so, but if you stay like that, I'll just. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Oh, and uh, have you seen Marlon? No, it's all my own, huh? <laughs> you're best off out of that one, I reckon. Yeah, I think you're right. I think she was completely insane. <laughs> I think you're right, that's all. here with Dietmar Briska. Uh, Dietmar, what's your role with Swamp Fox Productions? I'm the technical manager, yep. but I also design the lighting and operate the lighting boards uh -huh. in the fairly small company and uh, that keeps it very much in-house. Yes. Yep. And how long ha have you been with Swamp Fox? Um, my association with John Bishop goes back for at least 30 years <laughs> and Swamp Fox is a fairly new company yes. which John formed because the main theatres didn't want to put on his plays because they're very cutting edge confronting and a lot of people don't really want to be confronted. Yep. Yep. And what does uh, lighting entail? What does your job entail on a, on a play like Motortown? Uh, on a play like Motortown it's, it's quite an interesting play insofar that it has eight very individual scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite difficult to light especially with the equipment that's in there. It's a little bit sort of, uh, well it's the poor cousin essentially to yep. the main theatre. So I've, I've had to create um, uh, exterior scenes, interior scenes, nightclubs, um, houses and all, all sorts all of stuff. All on the one set? All on the one right. set. So it, it's all essentially done with lighting. So and what are some of the tricks you do to, to make something uh, differentiate between a nightclub or, or a store, whatever yeah. the other scenes are? What do so, you do? So, okay, with the nightclub, we've added, in this case, we've added a mirror ball and uh, some coloured lights on it and then also... Uh, um, reds and greens to simulate uh, a nightclub area and then close the whole set down very much. Mm -hmm. So it'd be basically purely concentrating on the actors and the set is, is just in the background. Yeah. So, so as the lighting guy, yes. as the lighting person, yeah. you've got to follow the uh, script quite closely, don't you, to know when to, to make the lighting well, changes? I, I that... probably start very early at the first, second rehearsal, so reading sometimes mm -hmm. to get a feel for the play. Uh, to see what the characters are doing and then I make notes and uh, decide what, how it should be lit initially. Yep. Um, and um, as I've made my notes and then I'm very fortunate to be able to get into this theatre basically any time so I can spend days here and put it all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I refine it, I put it up essentially, we look at it and I look at it and say look this needs less, this needs more refining and change it. So. And this is challenging as well, mainly, as I said, because um, um, each little cameo ideally would need, from my point of view, probably six to eight lights. Um, so I'm talking about eight, eight, we're talking about 60 lights, but I don't have 60 lights. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've had to mix and match a bit and, and create uh, different shadings by combining lamps and doubling up and that sort of thing. Yeah. Sounds interesting. So how about we might go in and have a look and see some of your lighting work? Oh, my, certainly. That All would right. be excellent, yeah. Dima, thank you yeah. for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. Cheers. I'm glad you're back, and I'm glad you're safe. I'm glad you can get your head gone. I hope you're going to be okay. Yeah, I am. But I don't owe you anything. No, and so I ask you to leave me alone. 
through your brother or through a letter or through a text message or a note via our teacher, then I expect you to leave me alone. That I was frightened. Are you sure that's what she said? If you're that, right. Well, that is a big surprise to me, I have to say. You sleep with a frown on your face. Did anyone ever tell you that? No. Well, you do. I went to the check on you and you were frowning. So what have you been doing since half five? I was cleaning the flat. Ah, good idea. Can I get you some breakfast? That would be lovely, Lee. To ask about the meaning of life is about as philosophically interested as asking about the meaning of wood or the meaning of glass. There is no meaning. Life is, as science has proved these last couple of years, a generic system, an arrangement of molecular structure. There's no solidity, only a perception of solidity. There's no substance, only a perception of substance. And there's no space, only a perception of space. Now, this is a freeing thing for me in many ways, Daddy. It means I can be anywhere, at any time. I just have to really try. <laughs> This is Jay. Say hello, Jay. Hello. Hello. How's Tom doing? He's all right, I think. Good man. Good man. All right, I'm here with Mark and Sandra. You've just finished watching uh, Motortown. Mm -hmm. Sandra, I'll start with you. What did you think of it? Brilliant. Brilliant, yep. What, what did you like about it? What did you dislike about it, if there was anything? Um, I thought the acting was fantastic. Uh, it's, um, I don't see much... Uh, Amateur theatre, but um, I was very, very impressed with the um, with the with the actors. Very impressed with the direction of the of the, uh, the whole play. If you didn't know it was amateur theatre, would you think that it was like a professional production? Definitely, definitely, excellent. I mean, we 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 see we go to a few plays in the um, you know the David William, the David Williamson plays and the Bell Shakespeare and stuff like that. And I think these guys were every bit as good as. The professional actors that we, you know, see in the city. Yeah. And Mark, your opinion? What did, what did you think of uh, Motor Town? I thought it was harrowing, <laughs> and it should have been. <clears throat> and uh, it was it was flawlessly acted and totally directed. Totally. Good term, totally. Janine, can I start with you? What did you think of it? And be honest. Oh, very intense. Very intense. Um, uh, I'm glad that we had the talk beforehand, so we knew that we were in for something a bit different and a bit confrontational. What was the talk beforehand? I, I don't... Um, the director actually spoke to the audience and, and gave them a bit of a, an idea what we were in for, um, that it wasn't a, a light, fluffy piece, and, um, and I think that was very in inspirational and it gave you something to, to, to look forward to and, and, and be ready for. <laughs> Blake, what did you think of it? I love the um, the commitment of um, in terms of the voice and, and uh, uh, the power of uh, what they're trying to converse. It was just amazing to kind of see um, in terms of the crying scenes and the and the and the, the, the eye line and how kind of focused they were. It was just kind of the, the forum in there. It's it's nice and personal, shall we say? Did you appreciate that? Or it's perfect for this type of play. I think um, you feel part of it almost uh, you can't get away from it there's no distance between you and the actors there's no distance between you and the emotion it's you're right there it's right there in your, yeah, in your face as they say yeah. I'm here with uh, John and Sandy now you two have just finished watching Motortown John I'll start with you what, what did you think of Motortown be honest uh, uh, fabulous I came I was very tired uh, didn't know whether I'd be able to stay awake during the show and as it so, went, sorry somebody else told me they fell asleep so it's okay <laughs> <laughs> was, was so good that I was wide-eyed and bushy-tailed by the end of the show. I thought it was absolutely fabulous, uh, very uh, thought-provoking and just an excellent show and we're extremely glad we came. And Sandy, what, how'd you cope with it? I thought it was really, really good. I thought they captured the feeling and the emotions that you could imagine they'd come back with and uh, I think they did a brilliant job of acting. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Theatre World. I hope you enjoyed going through the process of Motortown, performed by Swamp Fox Productions, and we hope to see you again next time. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>